thing in this in this uh, live demo that I think you'll really like. Where did my scatter plot go? I totally lost my scatter plot. That's all right. We'll uh, we'll recreate it. It's only a few lines of code. So you want y is horsepower, and we want color equals origin. So oh, and I don't want mark bar. I want mark point. Yeah. So so given this scatter plot, we were able to make it interactive. But the the other like killer feature of Altair that I r really like is there's this grammar of interaction that allows you to j just like how we built up the plot from basic building blocks that we can like put together and end up with an interesting visualization. There's uh, a grammar of, of interaction that allows you to build up interactive features of the plot from, uh, from these sorts of components. So I want to give you an example of this. Um, if we do an uh, interval, we're going to make an interval selection. And I'll do alt.selection underscore interval. And I'm just going to add this to the chart right here. So the chart has this way to say properties. I want to add some properties to the chart. And I'm going to make selection equals interval. OK, so what did this do? An, an interval selection is a way that you go to a chart and you click and drag, and you create a box that you can move around. So the inter interval selection can, can be in two dimensions. We can say en encodings equals x. And then we get an inter interval selection in one dimension that we can move back and forth. Encodings equals y. There's an interval in, in the y selection. And you're saying, well, this is great, Jake, but um, you know, what am I going to do with that? Uh, so y you have this box that moves around. And now, now the interesting thing you can do now is once you have this selection, every time you move this around, there's a signal happening in the renderer that's saying the selection has changed, and these are the points that are in the selection. And where things get really interesting is if you start um, making uh, properties of the chart conditional on the selection. So let's say uh, we want the color to be conditional on the interval. And if, the, if it's inside the interval, we want the color to reflect the origin. If it's outside, we want the color to be a value that we'll call light gray. And the reason you need alt.value here is because otherwise it would interpret light gray as a column name. So we want to like specify that this is actually a color name. So you do that, and um, now all of a sudden you can you know, click around, and the, the points inside the selection are, are the origin color, and the points outside the selection are, are light gray. So I love this, because I don't know, like, I'm sure, I'm sure I could do this in Matplotlib, but I, it would take me, like, reading four tutorials in an afternoon. But uh, in, in Altair, you can, you can do this in, in a few, you know, a few lines of code. And, and it gets even better. I'm going to show you this. This is, this is super cool. So, um, one one thing that that Altair does is if we if we say this is our chart if you if you want to do multi-panel charts there are a few little shortcut operators and I'll we'll go into these in more depth later but if you do sh chart with a little vertical bar and a chart what do you think that does or what would you imagine that does I don't know maybe the <laughs> stick them next to each other yeah you're you're right so now now we have two versions of this chart side by side um and the selection between them is, is linked. So like, because, because they, they both have that selection tied to them, they know about this. Um, and now, all of a sudden, you, you, you might think to yourself, like, hey, I could make some interesting visualizations on this. So what if this second chart, I encode x equals, say, acceleration? Now we have two different views of the data, horsepower on the y-axis, miles per gallon on acceleration. And we can see how these are related, right? It's like it's it's pulling out the <laughs> wow, thank you, thank you. So I, you know, in a, in a few lines of code, and this is what I mean by building blocks of selection. You're not you're not having to write a lot of JavaScript to do this. If you can just if you can just understand the declarative building blocks, it lets you start to explore things. And what I really like here is if you j do just the encodings in the x direction, um, then it's sort of it automatically shows you about some of the relationships here. Like as, as I go from left to right on miles per gallon, it's going from top to bottom on horsepower. Right? And you could, you could get that a little bit from the, the static plot, but um, it's nice to be able to, to do these automatically. And you, know, you can do other, other interactions too, like if you want the tooltip. And let's say tooltip equals, I forgot the name of it. Uh, oh, name. <laughs> tooltip e equals the name of the car. So now, um, if we're if we're interested in what any point is, we can we can get the name of the car just by hovering over it. 
So th this lets you, like, what, what did I do here? This is, this is 10 lines of code. 10 lines of code for uh, a linked brush across a multi-panel scatterplot with tooltips. I don't know, I kind of like that. <laughs> so, yeah. Mm. Oh yeah, that's weird. I think I think that might be that, that's interesting. I think that might be due to some 